Welcome to the Multicultural Media Online Conference hosted by the Multicultural Health Communication Service, Ministry of Health, with the support of Multicultural New South Wales. I'm your moderator, Deputy Director of the Multicultural Health Communication Service, and it's such a pleasure to be here uh, with you today, and thank you for joining us. Um, I am so pleased to let you know that we have two special guests. We had them. It was just, uh, um, we were thinking about it, but last year, almost the same time, last year we had Dr. Jan Fizel, our senior medical advisor, our favorite guest here on the show, uh, on the program, and um, where she's here to tell us all about um, public health information. Thank you, Jan, for being with us today. Happy to be here, Jess. Um, thank you. And we also have Dr. Um, S.V. Sandapan to be here today to provide important information and how to stay safe this summer and over the festive season. He is the trauma surgeon at the Children's Hospital at West Mead. Dr. Sandaban, great to have you again with us today. Good afternoon. Good to be with you again. Uh, if you recall, for last um, year, we had Dr. Sundapan straight from surgery and we had him. So we we really um, appreciate you being here with us. I, I know you're a busy doctor. Thank you. Um, and before we start, we'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land from which we are all meeting from today. We pay respects to elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge our um, Aboriginal colleagues and communities who may be um, with us um, in this session today. We also want to acknowledge multicultural communities, leaders and uh, refugee communities who are also represented in this session. So we will start with the questions. Uh, please make sure that you keep your microphones on mute, but keep your fingers um, active and ask the, your questions on the chat because we want to hear your thoughts. We want to know your questions. And Dr. Jan and Dr. Sundaban will be able to provide you the answers. So we have only 30 minutes. If um, Dr. Sundaban and Dr. Jan um, will... Um, Stay on for a few few more minutes if you have uh, more questions, but we'll start now. Dr. Jan, the festive season is here and uh, we're all looking forward to spending time with family and friends. What are the things we should be looking out for and what should we be preparing our loved ones as well? Look, I think most of us at the moment probably know someone with COVID or somebody who knows someone who has COVID. It is definitely with us at the moment, which is really disappointing, I know. But it does mean that we do need to be particularly mindful, particularly as healthcare resources are often a bit stretched at this time of year. So the more we can do to keep ourselves safe and healthy, the easier it will be for all of us. So the first thing is to stay home if you've got cold or flu symptoms. I know it can be really hard when you've got a family gathering coming up or a friends that you haven't seen for quite some time. But please, we are seeing it spread through family gatherings, friendship groups. I know within my own circle of family and friends, that's how it's going around. So please, if you've got any symptoms whatsoever, stay home until you're completely well. Um, do stay up to date with your recommended COVID-19 vaccinations. Now, that's particularly for people over the age of 75, people over the age of 65 who've got health conditions or people who have immunocompromised. Now, if you've had COVID in the last six months or it's been less than six months since your vaccination, that's fine. Hang on. We'll wait till you're at six months. But if it's been more than six months since you last had COVID or more than six months since you last had COVID immunisations and you're in those higher risk groups, please do go and get immunised. They're available through pharmacies as well as your GP. And the new vaccine should be widely available at this point. Talk with your doctor now. So particularly if you're older or if you are more likely to get severe illness, if you've had COVID before and wound up in hospital, if you've got heart disease, lung disease, and you may be eligible for antiviral medication, talk to your doctor now about having a plan for how you're going to access those medicines over the holiday period. It may be that there's a doctor on call for your GP's practice, or it may be around finding another way. But please, if you do need early treatment, make sure that as soon as you get those first symptoms, test with a rat. They're still available, widely available, and also easy to purchase from the supermarket or from the chemist or even from online re retailers. Keep a few at home so that you can do that rat test as soon as you get symptoms, because that way you can start those antiviral treatments early. Um, and again, if you can entertain outdoors, that reduces the risk of transmission. And again, you know, 
for food safety, for COVID safety, just keep that hand sanitizer around, wash. And particularly if you're sharing food, it's still a good idea to wash it encourage everyone to wash their hands before they eat and encourage everyone to sanitize before they eat because it's really you know normal for people to be playing a game and then come over and have food together just keep the bottle of sanitizer on the end of the table it's easy for people to you know just clean their hands at that point um wear a mask if you're on public transport if you have to leave home and you've got any symptoms it doesn't have to be COVID. you could have a cold or anything else for example yesterday i stayed at home because i had some symptoms of something that wasn't COVID. just means that i'm less likely to transmit things to other people and if you do have COVID, if you do have symptoms please no matter how much you want to see people in an aged care facility or hospital please stay away those diseases can spread easily and we can ruin a lot more than Christmas if we do go and visit people. And as you said, and Dr. Jen, a lot of people want to come together, yeah. during, especially during this time. Absolutely. Um, but I think it is up to us to make sure that we don't compromise the health of our, of, of the people around us. And a lot of that means being really understanding. Um, I was just talking today about within our own family group, we may have someone who's not able to join us and about, you know, we usually do one of those, you know, stealing Santa games. Can we do it over Zoom so that they can still participate, still be part of it? Um, last year when my son had COVID, he got to eat outside, we got to eat inside, but we could still talk to each other over the distance. So we're all still included. So think about innovative ways that you can be together as a family, as a friendship group, even if you can't be together in the way that you'd like, or celebrate on a different day. You know, being together is something that you can do at any time. So try and find a different day to bring yourselves together. Yeah, and I guess, Dr. Jan, if something does happen mm -hmm. and you feel unwell at home, what should people be doing and where, where can they, um, where, what should they do, where can they contact yeah. anyone? And so if you're unsure, um, and it doesn't have to be COVID, it could be an injury and you're not sure whether you have to go to hospital or not, it could be somebody's unwell from something else, it could be any health condition that you're concerned about that you'd normally like to talk to your GP about but, or your pharmacist or somebody else and you're not sure if you can access them, Health Direct will be open right across the um, holiday period. Um, and if you ring the translator interpreter service, they can put you through to Health Direct and help by interpreting in your language so you can talk to Health Direct during that time. They're staffed by registered nurses and they give advice for people of all ages, through, from babies through to older adults. And the nurse will answer your call, ask some questions and make sure that you're connected to the care that you need to have. And as I say, TIS is a really good way of coming in if, if you're not feeling confident about communicating about your health concerns in English. Now, of course, if it's an emergency, please call triple O or go to the hospital. We are also open 24 seven. And particularly for people who've got chest pressure or pain lasting for more than 10 minutes, if it radiates down the arm, up to the jaw, don't ignore it. Get help because that's really important. People have difficulty breathing, people who've got bleeding that can't be controlled. So if they've had a deep slice to the arm because you got a bit too excited about carving up the Christmas turkey or whatever else that could be going on, please make sure that you're putting pressure on that and getting to a hospital. Sudden collapse if somebody is usually okay. And the other thing that we do see a bit between the heat and people partying, uh, drugs um, and alcohol badly affecting people. So again, if somebody's not well and not behaving in a normal fashion, having had a lot of alcohol, a lot of drugs, particularly in hot out weather, it doesn't have to be, even be a lot of anything really, um, get them to hospital, please. But then also, yeah, thank you so much for that information, Dr. Jen. And, um, and on the uh, line is the 131450 for the translation and uh, translating and interpreting service. And also um, doctors and clinicians can also contact the healthcare interpreter services as well um, for help for language support. Um, so that's how uh, you can um, get the information. So thank you, Dr. Jen. Now, with the holiday season, you said if you need to go to the doctor, emergency, this is also the time when people are stressed and it is time. It is also a reminder to, to be kind to the health workers. And, That's it. and I think the thing is, um, you know, I've worked many Christmas New Year's in emergency departments before I moved into public health. And it is a really stressful time for everyone. People are, are a lot, a lot of high emotion going along, a lot of concern and 
waiting times, particularly for less urgent things, can blow out. No one wants to keep anyone waiting. Everyone wants to look after everyone. The healthcare workers are there to be providing care to you. But please be really patient and aggression and abuse is never okay. I, I can't believe I have to say that, but it's true. If you've got someone coming to look after you, please just be patient, be kind. At the same time, though, if you've got someone that you're looking after and they're waiting and you're concerned that their health condition is deteriorating, please do bring it to staff's attention. So it's it's about being kind and polite when you do that. But also, please do speak up if you're concerned that somebody's getting worse while they're waiting to be seen, because sometimes that can happen. And it's really important that you talk to us. Thank you so much, Dr. Jan and Dr. Sindap, and thank you again for, for joining us. And it is, um, as a trauma surgeon at West uh, Mead Hospital, you um, are someone who is in an emergency all the time and you're dealing with a lot of patients. This is important, right, to be um, just to, to make sure that um, we're all being respectful to each other and, um, um, and also just noting that there are people who are stressed. Like, yeah, that's true. I mean, this is a busy time for the hospital too. Um, so I think people should be uh, understanding and um, respect the, the health workers so every, everybody gets the right care that they need. Um, as Dr. Jan just mentioned, everybody is there to help. Um, if it's taking time, it's, it's only because they're busy attending to someone more sick and they will get to you eventually. And over the holiday season, Dr. Sandapan, what do you see in emergency? So um, I, I work at the Children's Hospital at Westmead. Um, from a trauma point of view, it's there are a few things that are quite common during holiday season and particularly during the summer holidays. Um, we don't like to see this happen, but it, it continues to happen. We, we do see quite a number of children coming in with um, um, drowning incidents, um, we tend to see quite a number of um, road traffic injuries during the holiday season and also falls um, from windows and balconies. This summer, we expect it to be much hotter than, than the last few years. So we're also um, concerned about you know um, heat strokes, children being exposed to a lot of heat and having heat injuries. And uh, I think recently in New South Wales, after many, many years, we have seen a couple of incidents of uh, children being left in cars and, and having injuries from that. Um, so, you know, those are, these are the things that we tend to see commonly during the summertime. Um, thank you, Dr. Sadapan. And we've already experienced some heat. It's It's been hot in the weekend and, and also there's been a change of weather as well and where it started drizzling. Can you tell us some of the dangers that um, the hot weather may affect babies and young children? And as you said, um, some people may not have intended to leave their children, but just the thought of it, it's just a reminder that it could get really hot inside. Yes, uh, uh, the, the temperature in, inside a car can be you know up to about 20 degrees higher than than the external temperature. And it does get hot very quickly inside the car. It doesn't take long, um, whether your car is big or small, um, it, it, it will get hot, very hot quickly inside the car. Um, leaving the window open a little bit doesn't help much. Um, so you need to have some way of reminding yourself that you're not leaving the child in the car. Um, there are things you can do. I think Children's Hospital has developed a little um, car keychain reminder that the baby is in the back so you can actually check and, and make sure that you haven't left your baby in the car. The children are small. Um, they will lose a lot of heat compared to, you know, the, the younger children particularly will lose more heat than older children. They, unlike us, they might not you know, um, take fluids as, as we do when we feel hot or dehydrated, we will go and take the water. A child might not do it. Um, they, um, so it's really important to make sure that you keep them cool and keep them hydrated um, during the hot weather. Some not of this, the so, sorry, yeah. You said, uh, doctors, and, the, and parents should be very, um, uh, very active in, in remembering these tips, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. So you've got to also be able to recognize if there's been a, a you know, symptoms of a heat stroke, which are quite, can be quite 
non-specific, like they could just be confused, agitated, um, you know, which which makes you wonder, you know, you're not sure actually what is happening. Um, with the younger children, if you're out um, in prams, make sure you not just covering the pram is, is not good enough because it can still get hot inside, just like in a closed car. Um, so using some wet cloth is actually a good idea because then it can cool inside with, with the air moving when you're walking, it'll keep the babies cool. Um, Dr. Sandapan, what can parents do and carers to to help avoid um, you know this this kind of um, heat stroke and and you know making sure that this doesn't happen? I mean, like you said, children, babies, they can't express themselves. Um, we sometimes don't know what could be wrong. Um, what would your suggestion be for for parents? Well, if you know it's going to be extremely hot, stay indoors if you can. Um, but if, if you are having to stay outside, make sure you you keep your children hydrated. Um, you know, they, they, they wear a hat to protect from the sun, um, sun um, sunscreen. Um, um, those are the kind of simple things that you can do to prevent injuries from heat, heat burns, heat stroke, all of that can be avoided. Um, I'd like to remind people to please, you can ask your questions on the chat. There is information as well provided to you on on, on the web, uh, on the chat for um, you to find out more information. Those are available in language as well. Um, Dr. Jan, turning back to you, not just for babies, not just for children, heat being too hot can be dangerous just for every individual. Absolutely. We know that some people, when you get older, it's harder to cope with the heat because your body doesn't naturally react as well as it does for the, sim uh, the signals from heat. Also, when you're pregnant and some people with other health conditions such as lung and heart disease can also have trouble coping with the heat. Um, we also know that if you're working outdoors in the heat, it's a very quick way to become unwell. And also if you're partying hard, as I said earlier, with alcohol and other drugs, um, they can also affect you far more substantially in hot weather. So the first thing to do, of course, is there are some medicines that can also make you vulnerable to the heat. So talk to your doctor, check in with your doctor about are there any things that you should be concerned about? Are there medicines you might not take on a very, very hot day that you might take on another day? Are there signs that you should look for to see if your health condition's changing because of the heat? Um, make sure that you learn the signs and symptoms of heat-related illness and keep cool and stay hydrated by drinking water. And that can, you know, on a hot day, a lot of people don't feel like drinking. And so it's one of those times when you just sort of say, drink what you feel like you want to drink um, because, you know, it, I know that I've given kids, you know, electrolyte drinks simply because they liked the taste of it and it was easier for it to go down. And so getting some drink into somebody is better than just sort of having them say, yeah, no, nah, I don't want anything. Help them find things that they want to drink and try and provide that to them. And there are resources now available, um, Beat the Heat resources. Absolutely. So we've got the Beat the Heat resources in a number of different languages, and I'd really encourage you to please have a look at those resources and share those resources, particularly whenever we've got hot days forecast as we do at the moment. We will see hot weather across summer, and it's going to be a, a bit of a struggle, I think, because we still need to mow lawns and we still need to get stuff done. But it's about trying to structure our day. So, for example, getting up early to mow the lawn or mowing the lawn later in the evening than what you would normally do so that you're not out exerting yourself. Same with putting up the Christmas decorations. Don't put them up in the hot of the day. Those roofs can get awfully hot. And please be really careful when you're climbing ladders and climbing on roofs because we also don't want to see you in our emergency departments after unfortunate Christmas or other light excursions. Dr. Jen, I was last weekend when it was so hot, I did put up the Christmas tree and I was really, it was so hot. And that is the best advice. Don't do anything. And, and that was the thing, you know, for my family, we put up the inside decorations because we knew that we couldn't do things outside. But at the same time, when we had to do things outside, we waited till the cool of the evening. And sometimes the evening isn't getting cool. So if you find that the evening isn't cool and it's still really hot, then don't go out and exert yourself because the, the, you can still get sick even when the sun is not that high. Yeah. Part of the thing with heat is it's the fact that we don't get a cool time overnight. 
effect. Mm. And so that's one of the things that can particularly affect people. You don't get a relief from it in these heat waves. And so that's where, you know, doing things like dampening cloths and keeping air, you know, we talk about it for COVID, we talk about it for heat, keeping cool air circulating. So if you've got a cool inside of the house, keep your house cool and don't let the hot air in, close the blinds and all those things. But if your house is hot, try and get the heat out of the house and also look for public venues that you can go to. Um, and so that could be um, the shopping centre, that could be a library, that could be um you know, all sorts of other places. It could be the public swimming pool where you find shade structures. It's about staying cool and trying to keep out of the heat, but being really careful about how you exert yourself. Thank you, Dr. Jen. And and so when you are um, gardening yep. and also doing things, just be wary of, of the time. Absolutely. So just be aware of what the weather's doing around you and understand that, you know, your body might actually tell you to stop that it's hot, you've got sweat pouring off you, you're feeling tired, it's really time to stop because that's before your body gets to a point where it can't keep adjusting the temperature for you. Thank you, Dr. Jan. And not Dr. Sindapan, there are other um, effects and other issues that happen when it's warm. And I'll, I'll go back to you, Dr. Jan and, and Dr. Sindapan. And these are the bushfire as well, and which can affect children and um, parents and adults and older people with the smoke as well. Isn't that right, Dr. Sandapa? Yeah, that's true, yes. yeah. Smoke inhalation can happen um, with bushfires or fires around, yes. Um, so again, as, as we mentioned before, um, prevention is better than cure. Um, so all of this comes around preventing an incident happening. Um, you know, be aware of what could happen and, and um, taking precautions to try and avoid that is, is good. So, you know, if it's very dry and hot, uh, making a fire outside is probably not a good idea. Um, you can put it off and don't let um, children play with things that can, um, you know, combust. We, we do tend to see a lot of burning trees during the holiday season from um, barbecues, for example, if people have lots of parties and, and have children running around and having them uh, getting contact burns from barbecues is another thing is quite common. So when you have big gatherings and, and lots of children around, it's just really important to make sure somebody is watching um, what the kids are doing and, and um, try and make the environment as safe as possible so that everyone can still have a good time and, and not have an incident happen, which will, um, you know, affect everybody who's, who's participating in the event and everybody has to go to a hospital and the whole festive mood is lost. Yeah. Um, thank you, Dr. Sandapan. And when you talked about barbecue, we realized food is so important with food safety. Dr. Jan. Yeah, and so this is one of those times of year where we actually do see a lot of food poisoning as people take things from one house to the other. Um, please, hot things stay hot cold things stay cold and things should not get hot, cold, hot, cold. It's really important that we don't give the bacteria a chance to grow. There's all sorts of resources about keeping food safe and it's really important though that um, if it's hot, keep the thing hot while it's being served to people. If it's a cold thing, keep it cold and don't leave it out. And have it, it feels like so wasteful, but be really mindful of how long something's been out on a table Something that's been out for an hour or so, it's probably fine. But if you leave something out accidentally for three or four hours or even overnight, and particularly for things like poultry or fish, please don't, just don't. It's not worth it. Um, the the um, Yeah, no one wants to see what happens after you eat those. And, and also I think what I think I, you know, from experience in, in, in some countries, that's a practice, it, you know, food, um, safety or you keep the food outside, it's okay, it's normal, but the weather is different. Yeah, it's it's so hot here. I mean, mm. we did one Christmas overseas in Europe and, you know, outside was four degrees. It was no problem if it could stay cold. But if you leave things at room temperature, the bacteria can breed. And so something that was completely safe one day can be very unsafe the next day. And even reheating it won't necessarily make it safe. So please, you know, have a really low threshold. Also, when you pile stuff up in your fridge, your fridge temperature um, can go up. So keep one of those fridge monitors, you know, they're, they're often little magnets or little things that you've got in your fridge to tell you what the temperature of your fridge is because often you will actually need to make your fridge colder when you've got it full of things compared to what it is normally. 
That is a great tip because you would forget that. You'd think that the temperature would stay the same, but that doesn't, that's not the case. No, and also even all the opening and closing yeah. that you do during Christmas or family gatherings or whatever else. So a full fridge actually takes more energy to keep cold than a, a fairly empty fridge. So if you're, you know, an empty nester and you've got all the family coming in and everyone's going into that fridge, um, that fridge temperature can go up. Mm. Thank you, Dr. Jad. Now, Dr. Sandapan, what are some um, other areas that parents and carers need to be aware of, especially during the warmer seasons? So, uh, as I mentioned before, falls through windows is something we see commonly during the summer. And this year, already in the last couple of months, we've seen five children fall through windows with at least three of them having had uh, quite severe head injuries. Um, that is a regulation, um, you know, that the windows um, on 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 the first floor and anything over one meter from the ground level, the opening should be restricted to less than twelve point five centimeters. So so that the, the kid's head doesn't go through, which is the widest kind of widest part, um, at least in the young ones. So if you're living, um, you know, just make sure that there is a window lock in place, and if it's in place, it's actually working. Um, and if it's not there, get one and put one in. And don't leave any furniture near windows. As kids tend to jump, they can fall through. Fall through if your window is left open. Um, that's what. That's the common thing that we see. Same with balconies. If if there are balconies, restrict access to to balconies for children, and also avoid placing things you know close to the balcony on which they can climb and peek over. It's often the kids are inquisitive when they see somebody you know the father mother or relative downstairs they will lean through the net or on they will try to get on top and lean over a balcony and tend to fall through um so that that can easily be avoided and as we talked before drowning continues you know the numbers number of children who come with um drowning incidents hasn't dropped in new south Wales, and the number of deaths that we see from this incident continues to be kind of steady um, so again, ensure that um, you know your gates are working. There is fencing around any water body at home. At home, um, if you're having a big gathering with people, um, there should be a nominated person who keeps an eye on children who are who are in the water. Uh, in drowning in children is very very silent. You don't see any thrashing or anything. They go underwater very very silently, and it can be fatal within within you know in less than a minute. And if they do, if they're, um, sorry. You no, know, it's just um, when you were saying about um, the incidents in the water, you know, we want people to, our kids to be happy and enjoying the time, but then there's precautions and, and, and steps that we need to be taking to keep them safe. Yes, exactly. We, I, I use this often, you know, everybody is a person. We don't want a person to become a number in our statistics. Um, so, you know, if you if you do things correctly, then these incidents are less likely to happen. If you're if you're submerged for a significant period of time, a child could end up with quite significant uh, neurological deficits and it's a lifelong uh, disability. Um, so beware of this and, you know, take simple steps. Um, children, if they teach your children about water safety, um, dress them with bright bright colors and sun safe clothing so you can keep track of them while they are near water mm. and be within the arm's length of a child if they are in the water these are simple things that will avoid it the other thing i wanted to mention was about road safety you know everybody is out on a holiday including children so beware there could be children on the street look for them um, drive carefully so you're not involved in any any um, road traffic accidents um, in parties, again, you should be aware of where the children are. One other mechanism we see children is uh, children being driven over in driveways. So keep the play area separated from, from your driveways. And before you get into your car and drive off, just make sure there's no kid around. Technology is brilliant. You know, now you, you have all these cameras which can even show things under, but sometimes they can fail. Um, so a second check is, is always important before you, you drive your car off from a driveway where you have lots of small children around. You can't see them on your camera sometimes if they are really low down. 
And um, I think there could be, you know, uh, there's some tips as well, Dr. Sundapan, that maybe have a watcher as a signed person to take care of the children just to be watching in the water and off the road, uh, on, on the road as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. When you have lots of children, there is, should be someone designated to keep an eye on where the kids are, what they are up to. Well, um, thank you so much, Dr. Sundar, but we are running out of time and I know there's so many other tips that we could share with you. But um, Dr. Jan, if there's anything that you'd like to remind people of, um, especially during this time, and I know we mentioned it, but if there's um, one thing people need to remember, especially with um, the COVID. Well, not just with COVID, but with everything, this time of year can be a really stressful time for some people because they really feel if they've lost a family member, if they're away from family, if they're feeling isolated, that um, things can go bad. So please do keep looking after your community, look after your family, look after your friends, check in if there's not someone that you should have heard from that you haven't heard from and make yourself available. Also make sure that people remember that there is help available if they are having a crisis or or feeling really un unhappy, alone, isolated at this time of year with the Transcultural Mental Health Line. And there are people available to take a call so that you've got someone to talk to. No one needs to be alone. Um, of course, during COVID and with any other health conditions across the um, holiday period, remember Health Direct is available to you and using the translator uh, interpreter service to try and get that information in your language so that you can feel comfortable speaking with those nurses and other health professionals that Health Direct can put you in touch with. And just that last um, thing to say that the healthcare workers, we're all here to look after you, your family and our community. So please be kind, be patient and make sure that we all look after each other. Thank you, Dr. Jen. And also, like you said, there is a transcultural mental health line, but there's also the Witness to War multilingual telephone line, which is launched to assist New, New South Wales residents impacted by overseas conflict, which is happening um, around the world today. So um, you can also access that line, which is by calling 1-800-845-198 within New South Wales. Um, so we've run out of time, but I did say if we have a few more minutes, um, Dr. Sundapan, is there anything you'd like to remind people? I know we've said a lot of tips, but if there's um, anything um, the most important that you think um, parents should be mindful of? You cannot repeat things enough. <laughs> Um, I think children are increasingly very active. Uh, they can do things within a fraction of a second when you don't expect um, it to happen. Um, so in, in the in the festive um, environment where there are lots of kids, it's really really important to be aware of uh, of this fact. And as as you mentioned before, whether it's around water or you're having a party at home. Uh, when there's a big gathering and lots of kids around, it's, uh, it is very, very useful to have a person designated uh, to keep an eye on children. Also talk to your children before, you know, particularly if you're having parties around water, if they want to get into water, they should let you know and take your permission before they get into water. Um, children tend to, when they, when they are playing or doing things, they, they don't know when to stop. Uh, so as a parent in this environment, I think it's important you you keep an eye on your children and make sure they take breaks from physical activities. And as we talked to before, also keep them hydrated so they get they don't get any effects of um, you know heat. Well, thank you, Dr. Sundap, and thank you for being with us again on December and May. Maybe we'll see you again um, in the next year. And we're so happy all with the time when you come and, and provide us all these tips. So thank you for joining us today. And Dr. Jan, thank you for all the tips and um, for being uh, with us um, throughout the year. Through We've been here, it's it's been a few years now and it's 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 we're so glad that you're here and that um, you have been supporting us and continuing to support us um, since um, we started this program. But it is the last session that we have for this year. Um, we want to continue to feature health topics in the next year. So please let us know what you have in mind and what you think your communities need. Multicultural media, um, you have been very, um, one, you've been wonderful 
in supporting us all throughout um, the COVID pandemic and, and, and through these um, public health information um, sessions that we have. So thank you so much. The recording of this session um, will be available on the New South Wales Multicultural Health Communication Service website. They'll also be emailed to you um, uh, through um, with the important beta to heat resources and translated information with you. I want to take the teams from the New South Wales Multicultural Health Communication Service, the Ministry of Health and Multicultural New South Wales, who work together to provide information in language and to keep all you informed of health issues and public health information. So thank you very much for joining us. Remember the tips provided by Dr. Jan and Dr. Sandapan. Take care, stay safe, and there is that tip of have a watcher, not just for um, young people, but for um, every age as well. Um, so thank you so much. Stay safe. Happy holidays. And um, we'll see you again in 2024.